Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with a top 1% agent. We are so, so lucky to have her back each week, Miss Beth Traverso. How are you doing, Beth? Hi, I'm doing great, Michael. Thank you so much for having me back here every week. It's always a highlight for me. I always enjoy I, it. Thanks. I appreciate that. The audience truly loves you. You bring the fire each week. Really, what's going on, both as an investor, agent, uh, just a wonderful person. So thank you for being here each week. So uh, we're going to talk about the market, something we do first on each video. We're probably doing this for the next three to six months. What's going on in your market? Remind people what market you're in and then what happened last week. Yeah. So I'm in the Seattle Metro market. So I'm just outside Seattle and it's a big county called King County that basically encompasses Seattle and the surrounding areas. Um, and what we've been seeing this week, you know, it, it is, it's the seasonal time when things get really slow right now before the holidays. Yep. So um, I have been seeing very, very little in the way of new listings, but that's not surprising at all because I see that every single year. Um, yep. We do still have more listing inventory this year than we did last year because okay. the the fact that it hasn't been absorbed as much as it did last year. Last year, nothing stayed on the market for more than two hours unless some a, a listing agent like forced that to happen. So right. the fact that things aren't moving down the line as quickly as they used to means that we are getting a little more inventory that's staying yeah. on the market from week to week. Not as much though. And, and as far as, you know, it's always the fresh new listings that get the most attention always. Right. And we're just not mm -hmm. seeing any of that. So, so buyers are, there's a couple of things I'm seeing going on out there with what buyers are doing. Um, some, there's a whole segment of them that are besides people that have been sitting on the sidelines this whole time, like you've been talking about for a long time now, the people that are, don't want to do the move up because of the interest rates or these other various reasons. Yeah, why. they're trapped. Yeah. There's a lot of reasons why they're trapped. I was just talking to a friend last night who was saying she's trapped. She thought about moving up, but why would she give up her 3% interest rate to buy a new, another house? that's maybe a little bit better, but going to cost twice as much. So that's exactly the math. I, I, I mean, so many people, you know, don't understand just how bad it is, right? Let's say you got in your first time home at 3%. You, you, you want an extra bedroom. You want another 400 square feet. You want a pool. You Whatever that next yeah. level is. First off, the price is going to be a little bit more. But the real killer is the interest rate. The interest that's rate's killer. double. Yeah. And then you do the math. It's like, well, I, I'll i get bunk beds. Yeah. I'll, I'll stick the kids they in with bunk beds. house for as much as maybe they were hoping they could because think, prices have corrected. There's no crash. You know, we're not crashing, but we are a little bit. In my yeah, area, my buy box area of the east side, we are a little bit down year over year because it was so insane last year. We do have negative year over year. And I think that's going to continue at least through the spring is my guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we had talked about the same friend. You know, she's a perfect real life example of, you know, she's thinking about maybe just doing an add on and doing some expansion. And, you know, it totally yeah. makes sense. Why wouldn't you look into that? So a 30 year mortgage is going to be an asset for her for yeah. decades. I know because it's probably never going to be. I mean, who knows? But it's probably not real. Oh, she's. I mean, if she's sub, if she's sub three percent, yeah, it's never coming back. Yeah, I'm at three and an eighth, and I'm not planning on going anywhere. Oh, so. why would you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. It, it it is interesting. Something that I I put out on my daily financial news this morning is the housing crash is canceled, and what I meant by that is we got another CPI print that was down. Uh, we now have the upper bound. I mean, there was a moment in time where I was literally thinking that we could see nine and 10% 30 year mortgage. It was never probable, but it was possible it was on the table. Right. It was. I mean, when they were skyrocketing like that, the margin was going up like unheard of that's now off the table. As far as I'm concerned, right. The, the, is it still possible? I guess in some kind of crazy world, but I'm not considering it anymore. I'm not even considering 8% anymore. In fact, I think there's a chance that we go sub six in January. Right. Yeah. And what is, why is that important? Why does that mean housing crash canceled? Because I believe we're acting in an environment where inventory stays abnormally no, uh, low, i.e. the Fed broke housing, what I've been saying for a year. And you're, we're going to start to see that more and more in the supply, i.e. your friend's example. Yep. And what's going to happen when rates go from seven and a half to five point eight, five and three quarters is the marginal buyer comes back. I'm yep. not talking about everybody. But hey, if we bring back 10, 15, 20% of buyers at five and three quarters for seven and a half into an environment of no inventory, suddenly stuff starts transacting at list price, right? We're not going back to 20% plus, but they'll transact at list. So I think I think this 
I think most markets we see a floor uh, other than Phoenix and Vegas and, you know, the, the stupid iBuyer markets. Right. But King yeah. County was not an iBuyer market. Never was. Never. Santa Clara County, iBuyer, no, yeah. no iBuyers here. So most markets are not iBuyer markets. So what do you think of all of that? So I agree with a lot of that. I do think that um, there is a tolerance that's built up too. a lot of it. A lot of real estate market is psychology is why it's kind of hard to necessarily predict sometimes That's why it moves so slow yeah and there's a lot of there's a lot of feelings involved and even analytical people still make decisions based upon how they feel about things a lot of the time and especially when it comes to where they live so um and ultimately i mean the numbers have to work if they can't afford it they can't afford it but you know but there's a lot of emotion into it too but like people i think everyone has accepted now that okay the rates aren't three but hey, they're not seven and change now. And now they're six and change. And oh, okay, well, that's better. Now maybe I can do this. Prices are a little better, you know. Yeah. And I think five and change, I think five and change is game changing. I think oh, we saw a little bit of let's begin to the fives, you know, which was yeah. when we when we first got into the fives, it was just it was like hitting a brick wall, you know, because we went from three to five, just like you know, hundred miles an hour, just hit that wall everything stopped and adjusted really quickly. There was, there was a lot of panic in the market at that time. I remember that was kind yeah, of, yeah. we a- have, we have videos where like it's dead. It stopped. Right. That's, that's, this is back to the psychology. We go from three to five to six, everything stopped. I think we had an interview in July. It's like, Michael, I, it's, it's, I don't know what's going on and it's going crazy. Then we go from six. Well, then we go down, comes yeah. back a little bit. Then it races to seven and a half. But now people's yeah. memories are seven and a half. If we go to five and a half, people have short memories, and they five and a half memories. is going to be uh, 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 really people are going to be jumping in on that. I definitely think so. And then, like you said, if it also if it happens to um, align with the post no supply, yeah, the no supply and a spring or pre spring, yeah. kind of pre spring here, pre spring bump where people want to move. People are right now starting to make their plans for after the holidays and what they want to do next year. And they, yes. a lot of people want to move and they're not going to wait around forever. And if they feel like it's getting more affordable, the other thing is the layoffs. I know around here, we have a lot of tech jobs and the tech mm-hmm. layoffs. If people feel like they've weathered that and they feel like, okay, yep. I'm going to have a job. I feel like my income is secure. Um, I want to buy a house. There's nothing for sale. I'm also, as a listing agent, I'm seeing in the last week, what's been different since we talked last time was last time we weren't really getting much in the way of showings. And now we're getting lots of showings on pretty much everything across the spectrum. Yeah. And people are calling there. You know, I always know when we're, this is how, this might be a good tip for sellers out there. And so if you, if you want to know if you're in the zone, for me, you're in the zone. If we're getting showings, I'm getting phone calls and people are asking for additional information in our inspection reports or things like that. Like here's all the stuff, you know, and if we're getting those things happening regularly, then an offer is going to be imminent. If you're not getting those three things, then something needs to change. So, yeah. or at least be it's funny. I, I I'm listing a, with the first property I bought 51 or 52 days ago tomorrow. I think it goes live tomorrow. 309. I bought for 203. Yeah. So we'll see. This is like the worst time to list, right? We're talking what? 10 days before Christmas, 11 days before Christmas. We're just going to see. We're going to find out. And yeah, uh, yeah. you're ready. I don't, I mean, I don't know that market, but I won't see, you know, if you were up here, I would say no need, no reason to wait unless. Yeah. I mean, it's a a flip for me. It's always been a flip. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't want to wait 90 days for FHA. So I'm going to see if it goes conventional or cash. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Why, why wait? Why wait? So we're going to find out and I'll document it on the channel and uh, it's going to be fun to watch. I want to see a link to that listing. Yeah, I will. That. I will get that. Too. Yeah, yeah, four, four. The the key for me is it's a four car garage in the heart of Fresno, which oh, I I've been there twenty two years, mm-hmm. never never seen a four car garage and four car garage. usually. I, go ahead. I know. Sorry, I know in my area there's a whole. We have like these different buy types of buyers, and one of them is the shop buyer. Yeah, and this is perfect. To, they have a workshop. They want to tinker. They want to have their vehicles. They can't. They can't park them in their HOA yeah. neighborhood or wherever. And they just, they, that's their thing that they care about even more in the house. I bet you a lot of people will go straight to that garage before they even go into the house. Ha- oh, the house is nice too. But like, let me look at this. Well, that, we, we dolled it up. We put <laughs> garage door openers in both. Absolutely. Yeah. It's set up. It's cool. like two cars this way, two car this way, big old carport. So it actually can support six cars. Oh, I put in cool. a nice decorative gate that opens to the access to the four. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. That, that, that house I is going to sell because of the garage, not the kitchen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It has a kitchen and that's important. Yeah. You know? yeah there's a <laughs> stove over there, a kitchen. Yeah. The bath yeah. is remodeled. So 
Yeah, we're gonna find out. People keep telling me housing's crashing. I'm gonna go make a quick thirty grand in you know seventy five days. We'll I know people happens. are making it work in any environment. You know, there's always been challenges. It just the only thing that changes is what exactly they are, and you just have to be adaptable. That's it. Simple as that. Yep. There and there are deals on the MLS. That's what I am proving. Yes. I've locked up two deals in the last six or seven weeks on the MLS. I'm listing one tomorrow, yeah, and we'll see, right good now, or bad. The deals, and I don't know what you're seeing down there in Fresno, but I know around here what we're seeing is. There's, I'm seeing a lot of showing activity, but I'm still seeing buyers a little hesitant to pull the trigger on offers, but I'm expecting they're very close because I had several people tell me, hey, let me know if somebody beats us to it. We're working on putting it together kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, that's positive, but um, yeah. but it's not like, you know, we're not seeing every people just striking quickly with offers right now. They're yeah. being very, well, they're taking their time to contemplate it and consider everything yep. and that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, what I'm seeing is the clean stuff that's priced right goes fast. Where I'm trying to buy is the heavy fixer because I have the cash to do it. it the, I'm basically buying stuff today that doesn't go FHA. That's what I'm buying. Yeah. And that's uh, very few, very little competition because very few people yeah. have the down payment and the repair. Right. Uh, so and that's, uh, that's what I'm a playing. lot of flippers aren't or investors aren't in the market right now because they they're getting know. burned. They got some he heavy holding costs yeah. and the, all that hard money nonsense they have. Yeah. Right. So if you're able to operate independent from that, then you have that advantage or um, yeah, or you're able to make the numbers work, you know, because some people, yeah, like I said, they, they, they bought when prices were high and now they're trying to sell and prices have adjusted and yeah. Um, they've got these heavy holding costs. Yeah. So that's so a lot of them. So that doesn't leave many buyers out there. It's you and probably a few others. And that's yeah, there's, there's probably six to 10 of us out there that are yeah, still buying. All, I'm sure you month, all know so. each other. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Beth, where can people find you if they want to buy or sell in King County? Yeah. So at Beth Traverso group.com or just find me on the Facebook groups or on my Facebook page. There you go. Thank you so much. Thanks.